Hello everyone, my name is Michael SK and welcome back to the podcast, or, or The Legend of Pirates Online, same thing. I'm here with Jack yet again. How you doing, Jack? I'm doing just great, Michael. How about you? Oh, I'm doing oh so fantastic. I don't know if I'll be saying the same thing after we are done with this recording session, but for now, I'm definitely fantastic. Uh, we are that's, not the right, that's not the right attitude, Michael. It is not, but... I see... <laughs> Personally, I think you're going to be in a better mood by the time we're done. Oh, I beg to differ. But um, right now we are uh, going to continue our questing, but we're actually going to do a little bit of something different. Uh, we're going to partake in a uh, invasion. I don't know if you want to talk more about that. You probably have more information on invasions than I do. If you want to explain that a little bit. Yes. Um, there will be an invasion of Port Royal by Jolly Roger. That's it. So that's that's the explanation, huh? <laughs> <laughs> like, like, I hated. Yeah. Um. I, I I think his I think his reasoning behind it is uh, he wants to take control of the governor's mansion. So uh, it comes in different waves, and you have to try to prevent all eight or nine waves from getting to the mansion okay there we go that's it's a little better <laughs> they're pretty fun uh although i will say i've only done one on Talapo before and it was super laggy but that was like right when they first came out and i think after that because it was so terrible they took it out for a while so hopefully it's better now i do recall back in the pirates online days that my game would literally freeze in those types of battles like there was just so much shit happening that yeah my computer could not handle it at all yeah and for some reason Talapo or pirates online just did not do as well with lots of players in one area i mean i think that's one thing that toontown did pretty decently because it seemed like you could have a lot of different players in one area and it, it wouldn't lag too too bad but in Pirates Online, if like if you had twenty or thirty people in one place, it just kind of it fucked your whole thing up. Pretty much, I absolutely agree. Um, right now, I'm on my ship. If you'd like to join me, sure. I, I need to find um, other things. I just want to make a quick comment. Uh, right it. before we started our recording session here, I turned in my grenade quest. So that's uh, right you it, did it, it took it took literal months like half a year <laughs> to do it but i finally got my grenades i don't know if i should feel proud or oh no i would not feel i would not feel proud just untracked my quest for some weird ass reason um right now i'm just trying to find uh reapers and revenants apparently that is for the Black Pearl quest and also for my Voodoo Staff quest. And I am 35% done with the Voodoo Staff. I will actually obtain that, by the way. You're going to get your Voodoo Staff? Yeah, uh, I would like to. I think it would be... Uh, like I've actually never used the Voodoo Staff in this game before. so It's honestly the coolest and probably one of the most op weapons in the game then i need it you need it yeah michael's very op if i'm not you living know, an op life am i even living exactly not many people know this but originally when michael was naming his channel he was going to go with michael op <laughs> but the username was taken by some other michael so yeah completely true yep this is all factual the all right, 20 minutes until the Fort Royal invasion. Yeah, it seems like it. I don't know if you want to teleport over to me. I'm on my ship right now. Yes. Gonna go against these undead fools. Oh, but I do have some things to bring up before, you know, the chaos does happen. Okay. Some lovely discussion topics. Okay. So one of them being is... uh. I have decided to actually look up information on how to make my commentary, or my uh, audio for commentary, sound a lot better. And... And sexier? Hopefully. 
<laughs> I mean, one of the yeah, things. Yeah. So if if you guys are listening to this episode and you you find yourself getting aroused sexually, you know it's because of Michael's uh, tricks that he found online. Yes, I did find them online. Uh, some some pretty simple tricks that you can do with audacity. Uh, I myself am am just amazed. But so what kind of stuff are you doing? I know one of the things, and I will admit it's truly a truly incredible thing that you can do. Is uh, that was a strange bit of lag. Uh, yeah. a really Not cool a thing. Sign. <laughs> a cool thing that you can easily do, and I cannot believe I wasn't doing this before, was noise reduction, where oh yeah yeah, where it will take away like all those uh moments where you're not talking, uh and you know there's still that background noise that very faint yeah you get that white noise. Yeah, and you can it removes it so easily. It's it's truly some interesting black magic. And with it's voodoo. I, I mean, when Audacity was first invented and and they introduced the noise reduction feature, uh, they threw the creator of Audacity into a into a dormant volcano because they thought he was a witch. Wow, you Again, definitely know true. more history than me. Yep. Um. With the noise being reduced, uh, I'm compressing the audio, normalizing mm -hmm. it to a certain volume. Yes, Michael. I'm, I'm doing great things. Why? It's like an audio engineer's wet dream. Everything <laughs> you're saying. Um, and then I also increased the bass by three decibels, I believed. The hell did I destroy? That See, that's the sexy factor there. If you up the bass, it makes you sound... Like you have more 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 testosterone in your voice. Oh yeah, definitely. I think I also increased my treble by like 0.5 decibels. I don't know. It regardless. Doesn't that cancel out the bass being increased by five decibels? I don't know. I felt like well, I guess if I'm increasing one of the things, I should cr increase the other, right? I, I guess. See that that's where I fail with audio. This is why I've never messed with it. Well, I don't think it's necessarily failing. You just have to do what sounds good. That's what I do. Yeah, and I mean, I'm content with uh, with what I did, for sure. Wrong shit, by the way. Aw, oh, shit. <laughs> now, see, now, Michael, we have a Corsair after us. Yes. That is not a good sign. We should probably focus on the Revenant, to be honest. Luckily, Michael is an expert at sailing, so this won't be an issue. I... Wouldn't say that, but you guys are about to find out if that's true. I'm actually getting really annoyed by how dark it is. Yeah, because of the the green. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of cool. It, it's eerie and whatnot, but... I don't God think damn. it did that in the original game. I think it would do it green on Port Royal, but that was it. Uh, maybe you're right. That's weird. Because it got to the point in the original game, like... Uh, Pretty soon after they introduced invasions, it was like every hour on the hour, a different island would be invaded. So you're it doesn't right. make sense that they would do it all across the Caribbean. You know what I mean? Yeah, you're right. You're right. I totally remember that. As soon as they introduced it, it was just happening nonstop on some yeah. sort of server. Yeah. And then it got to the point, just like field offices in Toontown, like where it was cool at first and then it got really fucking annoying. I'm kind of excited for the field offices again because I don't remember them too well. They were cool. Uh, I think Toontown Rewritten is redoing them, though. That's fine. Their concept for it was actually really cool. They were going to do, like, um, to be less intrusive, instead of being, like, normal cog buildings where they hit a, a random building on the street, they take over a Toon headquarters on a street, right? Oh, Okay. And there's four doors on each side of the building, and you have to get like a, a group of like 16 tunes to go up at once and take down the building. That's actually really, that's a really neat idea. That's a, that's the equivalent of a raid at that point. Exactly. Yeah, and I think that, that see, that's a good. I think they should focus on stuff like that, where it's like repetitive content that you can do more than once. It's not like some of the stuff they've been doing lately where it's like oh you can do this quest it's cool but then it goes away and you can't do it anymore yeah i was actually streaming toontown rewritten the other day and someone was telling me in my chat like oh yeah did you do the april fool's day task and i'm like no it's like 
May 1st already. Yeah. And it just it went away. I'm, I'm yeah. down for that permanent content, not that temporary content. Exactly. And people were saying that uh, when open beta was released, they're like, hey, you remember uh, that big invasion day event that you did for the end of Alpha? Could you guys bring that back? And they were like, uh, no. So it seemed like, like they spent so much time on something like that, too. Yeah, you would think that they want to show it off to more people. Because if you think about the number of people they had in Alpha, it was, like, tiny. It was, like, a few hundred people. It definitely would have been really nifty if they were able to bring that back. It's just, like, a mini game or something. Yeah. And that's one thing you got to give uh, this team for, Talapo's development team. They do a really good job of implementing content that is, like... It, it's not. It's nothing big, but it's, like, a new cave is, like... A new batch of enemies, a new quest line, all that stuff to explore. Well, wait, they actually did bring in something temporary. Wasn't it like that uh, that Hollow Woods or whatever? Yeah, but that'll come back next Halloween. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's reoccurring. Yeah. Okay, okay. I can get behind that. And even like in, in TTR, when they did Storm Cellbot, they added some interesting twists to it with that, uh, that quest line. But they didn't do it this year. And they said, I think, that they're not going to be doing it again. So it's like, why bother developing something that you're only going to let people do for a week and then that's it? True. Definitely a problematic deal. You could mm -hmm. be spending a lot more time and resources on something a little bit more deserving. Yeah, like a feature. Yeah, a permanent one at that. Or reoccurring. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But whatever. Toontown is Toontown. This is Pirates. Yes, this is Pirates. And one thing I really like about this game, and I liked about it uh, when it was live, is that they have those uh, recurring in-game events, kind of like the Queen Anne's Revenge or the the Invasions or even like the Treasure Fleets, that kind of thing, where it would happen periodically and out of nowhere. And I'll, I'll be honest, like I don't, I don't ever remember the Queen Anne's Revenge being a thing back in uh, back in the original game. Like yeah, I... it was a thing. It was towards the tail end because that's when uh, it, it coincided with the release of Pirates 4. Oh, okay. Yeah. I just got a. It was cool. I just got an email saying that my uh, test for my music appreciation class was graded, and I'm just like, hopefully Ooh. that was good. Michael checks his grades live on stream. Not even or streaming, recording. not even live. <laughs> Live on recording. <laughs> I don't even know like where I'm supposed to go to find these ships. I've kind of just been sailing around. Just, I'm good, dude. Just waiting for I that. Think we uh... have like ten minutes left. Yeah, just it's about gonna happen 10. at eleven. Yeah. You mean eight o'clock? Yeah, sorry. Get get on the right Michael's time zone. West Coast scrub. Whatever, Eastern peasant. Hopefully that was not <laughs> offensive to anyone at all. Yeah, everyone on the East Coast. Unsub, unsub. Please don't. <laughs> I need those numbers. I need you. <laughs> um, another thing to bring up, completely off topic. I'm just trying to get, like, before I forget, all the topics in my head, you know, completely out there. Um, today, after uh, the picnic that I was talking to you about prior to us recording, mm -hmm. uh, I went over to my older sister's place um, because before I asked her if she would uh, cut my hair. I don't know if you knew this, but I've actually been somewhat growing oh, my yeah. hair out. And I needed it yeah. cut. I, 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 I was tired of it. I didn't want to deal with it anymore. So I asked her to just please cut it. And she did. But then she fucked up. But oh, the, no. But then she kind of made it better. Um, I think it came out pretty good, but... So far, and I posted it on Snapchat and everything, like, I've been getting messages from people <laughs> saying I don't look the same anymore. Like, I look like a completely different person. She fucked you up that bad? I, I think it came out good. <laughs> I think it's I'm just, just like, I, I think it's the result uh, of having long hair for so long and then getting it as short as I did. Yeah, people don't recognize you. They do not. We need to destroy these uh, undead ships here. The okay. Revenant and the Storm Reaper. 
And then after we do that, we will make our swift escape to Port Royal. Okay. Sounds like a plan. Right now, I'm rocking the short hair again, and I will admit, it feels pretty dangly. Do you feel dangly. free? Yeah. I do. I do. I like. I, I feel that, like, that chill, and I also feel a little bit lighter. <laughs> Not lying. Michael lost six pounds when he cut his hair. It's a weight loss secret that I'm happy <laughs> to share with all of you. Doctors hate him. <laughs> they really do.